Welcome to Through the Forest. Each week we're going to review a section of scripture to determine what the word says about how we can be better parents. Let's get started with the weekly word with our hosts, Jeff and Brad. Hello, welcome to this episode of Through the Forest. I'm Jeff Cameron. I'm here with Brett Snyder. Um, Brett and I are actually pre-recording this episode, the day it's posted. If you're listening to, to this uh, the week this comes out, we're actually going to be ministering in Jordan, and so we would welcome your your prayers and really uh, appreciate that as um, as when this post will be kind of finishing out our week of ministry and um, really excited to see how God's going to going to work through um, through each of us um, through our team in in general and um, just uh, really really excited to kind of have a, a heart connection with believers in a different part of the world and. Um, just seeing more evidence of how the the spirit unites, and we're excited about the the shows that will follow um, our our return. And um, so we'll we'll post some some stuff, and and probably have some stories to to share on on the the podcast when we when we get back. And um, so we're we're excited for that. But since we knew we were going to be away, we decided to go ahead and record in advance. Uh, we know that a lot of you are faithfully listening and um and now you you won't miss a, a week we wanted to make sure there was there was content we're going to really try our very best to get something to you each week um so far our schedule has kind of uh, allowed for that and um so we'll kind of be playing it by ear moving forward and, and hopefully we'll be able to, to continue but um for now we wanted to, to get something up and and just uh keep it all going and so brett i'll turn it to, to you to, to get us started with a word of prayer Sure. Uh, Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord, with humble hearts, Lord, hearts that are submitted to your, your perfect will. We ask for you to fill us with your Holy Spirit. Give us that boldness, Lord. Uh, again, just thinking about the, the trip for Jordan coming up, Lord, I just pray that, uh, Lord, you just, uh, you, know, you know, anoint us and give us the words of encouragement. And, and Lord, we just ask you now as we just get into your word and Lord, as we just discuss it, a very powerful chapter in the book of Psalms. And Lord, I just pray that we can find application uh, to it with regards to, to marriage and raising children, Lord. But ultimately, all the scripture points to you and to your wonderful work that you've accomplished for us on the cross. And it's all for your glory and honor and praise. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, you know, since this is recorded, we don't really have the benefit of knowing exactly what was preached this um, past Sunday, and and so uh, so we know that the key text is going to be Psalm 22, and that's what we're going to move through uh, together. Um, and so, if there are any uh, points or things that are duplicated from the sermon on Sunday, uh, then I suggest that it's simply something that God wants you to hear. If he, if he keeps on pressing it and, and repeating it, then we'll just chalk it up to, uh, to that. Um, but Brett, I'm actually going to turn it over to you and kind of give us maybe your initial thoughts of Psalm 22. Well, first of all, Jeff, that's really true. Every time you see something repeated twice in the word of God, you got to realize, well, you know, where there's two or more witnesses, right? There's, there's yeah. meant to add uh, real uh, yeah, like why do I keep hearing this yeah like, exactly so for you know if we do happen to repeat something well there you go folks <laughs> well I'll tell you uh, Psalm 22 for me probably ranks as you know for me as one of the one of my favorites it it just is such a powerful thing I mean it was written I mean I guess a lot of people say it was written you know probably between 900 and 1000 years before uh, you know by King David before the time of Jesus um you know, it's, it's prophetic in nature. Uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, aspects about the things that David said that never happened to David, right? So you have to pretty much make that deduction that there's some sort of prophetic statement going on here. And, it, you know, you fast forward, you fast forward to the, the New Testament time. And, 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 you know, the reason why this is such a pivotal verse for me is you have the verse there in second Peter, uh, of, of, you know, chapter one, verse 19. Um, I think it's better read when you read the old King James, it says that, you know, we, we have the more sure word of prophecy, whereunto you do well that you take heed as unto the light that shineth in a dark place unto the day's dawns and the day star rises in your hearts. And in context, this statement is being made by Peter, 
by the verses that precede this, Peter is saying, like, we've seen the Lord in his glory. Um, and, G and, and Peter's referring to that, uh, that Mount of Transfiguration experience. You know, Peter's saying, like, you know, we were on that mountaintop. We saw the Lord, you know, miraculously arrayed in all his glory. I've kind of assimilated it to, like, Peter was saying, like, we've had that mountaintop experience. We had that emotional high uh, in that story of the Mount of Transfiguration when they came back down the mountain, back into the valley, they were facing a demonic person. So, you know, emotionally, we can all experience those emotional highs and those lows. And Jesus is with us through all those emotional times. But then all of a sudden, here in Second Peter, Peter pivots and says, but, you know, but even better than the emotional highs and those, you know, emotional experiences, we have the more sure word of prophecy. It's more reliable than just going on how we feel. Um, and I am convinced that this is why the Lord has woven in prophecy into about 25 to 30 percent of all the scriptures. I mean, you almost think I, if you really were going to line up all the words of the Bible, every third or fourth word is prophetic in nature. It really does make the Christian faith extremely unique. Years for years, people would ask me, Brett, why are you a Christian? And in the beginning, in my earlier years, I would say, well, yeah, Jesus came into my heart. He's, he's given me a new life. I've repented. I've, I've, I'm following after him. I feel hope. You're right. You know, and there's a lot of things that are woven into there that are emotionally driven. And then when I started really developing a passion for prophecy, and I saw the scripture by Peter validating the value of prophecy, I'm like, okay, hold on a second. If people ask me if I'm a Christian, I'm going to start first saying it's because of the more sure word of prophecy. That's why I'm a Christian. And you go back to Psalm 22, written 900 years before the crucifixion of Jesus, and you see in Psalm 22 so many things play itself out. It's like, whoa, time out. There's something that catches my attention. That is a degree of the miraculous to me. And when we snag on to this prophecy and we see how the word of God predicted something and it came through 100% correct, well, then it makes me want to look at the other two thirds or 75% of the word and say, well, what does the Bible say about everything else, about marriage, about raising children, about all these other things? It, I, those things must be inherently true as well. I have taken this perspective, me personally, and I've shared this with my kids. I encourage them to think about prophecy. Look at how prophecy has been fulfilled. Let that be that further validator in their own faith that goes beyond just their emotions and how they're feeling, whether good or bad, but they can rely on that more sure word of prophecy. Jeff, you know, what are your perspectives on this? So I, I look at Psalm 22, and I, I kind of think, and we see a lot of um, text in Matthew 27, which is going to be the chapter that we unpack quite a bit here over the next couple of weeks and what we did uh, last week. And there's definitely um, some language that's borrowed in Matthew 27 from Psalm 22. And so there's definitely some connection to, to the Messiah. Um, but there's so much there's so much in Psalm 22 that is so similar to other things that David has written in Psalms and and so I I don't think it it is completely disconnected from from David and his experiences and the fact that he is is suffering and and certainly it's um, all, all these thoughts and ideas are ultimately transferred to to Christ as he becomes the the suffering servant and uh, but nonetheless I think what what the idea behind that really helps to to frame it is the humanity of Jesus I mean the fact that Jesus was willing to leave the glories of heaven for this to to willingly suffer like he knew that he would experience the physical suffering from the hands of, of men and and the reason why this is so important is because even though David was a sinner uh, un, unlike Jesus David was a sinner we can all have 
moments like like David, where where we're suffering, and we kind of echo the words that that David says in in verse one, like like Why have you forsaken me? Which means like like God, where where are you? This is mentioned in so many other psalms, like like how long, Lord, how long will you hide your face from me, forever? And I, I guess the the bottom line with what we have to wrestle with as people is that there are going to be things that come into our path that cause us hurt and cause us pain that are really through no fault of our own. Now, there's going to be things that, that do that that are completely our fault and on us, but there are going to be other things that there, there was really just no controlling it. You know, this is an outside circumstance or, or situation, and it just... Um, it, it's just causing me, me pain and, and anguish. Like, like what, are, what are you going to do when your kid yells at you and say, I, I don't want anything to do with you. Like, I, I, I hate you. Like you, you never do anything for, for me. I mean, these are, these are the expressions that, that parents are hearing. And, and I know, I know what we want to do in those moments. We want to press back and like, how, how, how dare you? I, I do everything for you. You know, it just emphasizes this principle that the closer someone is in our life, the greater capacity they have to hurt us. And so when it comes to our spouse or our children, um, we, we have this really intense responsibility to love well. I mean, and, and hopefully our, our spouse is, is equally um, maturing and at that point, place where they like get that and understand that that concept but this is something that we need to actually teach our our children I mean I've had plenty of conversations with with my kids uh, about how we need to be careful using our words because we have the capacity to cause this this suffering or this 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 pain and um and we have the ability to to heal with our our words as well and Brad, i'm curious how you've modeled this maybe in your home oh my goodness well first of all the things you just said are so rich and they're and they're so multifaceted i mean no doubt about it the lord you know takes care of us right the lord jesus even described how uh, you know, Solomon wasn't as great as so uh, as so beautifully as these lilies that are in of the field, and and he's always in the in the process of taking care of the animals, and he and all the more he does so for us. And then, yeah, something uh, troubling uh, happens to us, and we shake our fist and say, "God, you know, I, I can't believe you're allowing this to happen to me." And and uh, <laughs> thank goodness we have such great examples. You think about the Book of Job and. Um, you know, there's always something bigger going on. The Lord always has a purpose um, when there is, you know, a hardship that's happening to us that maybe we didn't inherently bring on. There are things that we certainly bring on by making bad or stupid choices. And then other times we think that we're doing our devotions and not missing a beat in our prayer life. And then all of a sudden we get the flat tire. It's like, what in the world? Um, you know, I have to say, thankfully, it, you know, about, I can't recall, and hopefully it's true and it's just not a bad memory. Um, you know, I can't recall my kids saying to me, I don't want anything to do with you. I was like, thank goodness that's ever happened to me. But, um, you know, but I, I can definitely say that along the way, there have been times where uh, we, we've probably, in, in, especially with our teenagers, younger children, it, it can be more authoritative and you know, my way or the highway, but, you know, the teenagers, it's like, you know, there have been times where, you know, we've probably had to, uh, you know, they've asked for something and we've had to, to had to deny them uh, the, the, re, the request. It's just the, 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 what they were asking for, it necessitated a responsible parent's uh, response by saying, uh, I, I'm, you know, I don't think it's a good idea. <laughs> and, and, you know, when, when Vicki and I have navigated these kinds of waters, uh, in letting our teenagers down by denying them a request, uh, we've always, you know, we just didn't just say, no, you can't, right? Realizing that they're young adults and they're trying to process and ask, and they're asking and they're, what's the reasons, right? Um, you know, we, we definitely tried to make that effort to have a reasonable 
uh, conversation in talking, right? And to explain some of the pros and cons. I mean, perhaps if our denial was uh, of their request was due to a maturity level, right? Uh, you know, well, well, based on how they would respond many times would confirm our decision for denial. Because if they reacted child, childish, well, we, we, we would say, okay, th this is one of the reasons. You know, years ago, I, I, I watched a youth pastor. We were on a, a missions trip. And some of these teenagers were behaving foolishly, right? And I'm thinking to myself, I would have been saying that was really immature. I can't believe you, you acted like that. But this youth pastor said, you know what, guys? I, you know, I, I know you want to have fun. But that kind of behavior... It's, it's very young. And I thought, what a statement to make. Because, you know, they want to be mature. They want to show themselves as mature. But many times they're, gonna, they're not going to be mature. And if I said that's immature, it's probably going to trigger a negative response and possibly even foster rebellion. And, and I thought, wow, what a wise statement to say, hey, that's just, that's young. That's young. So think about how you react in that next time in an, in an, in an older way. And so, you know, that was something I, I learned. And you know what, if they, if we deny them back to my teenager stories, um, if, if they actually did respond with a degree of maturity, um, well then, you know, we would, we would say, you know, we, I appreciate how you've reacted. Uh, you know, I think that that gives me further grounds to just continue to consider, you know, this in, in denying it or approving it uh, going on. So, but at, at any rate, you know, if we've noticed that they're suffering uh, genuinely uh, or because of self-pity, we've always tried to tie them back to those scriptures that spoke of suffering, even when they had no say in the matter or had no control over the matter. Uh, and that they not and they did not inherently invite disaster, you know, into their lives uh, because of their naughty behaviors. But we definitely tried to tie them back to to Bible characters and stories that it's still a fallen world, and uh, we've been given a grand and glorious hope of eternity. But along the way, in this life of being pilgrims, where we might we might experience some times of uh, feasting and some times of famine. Yeah. And so, what are we to do? then in the face of suffering. Um, I actually want to read the encouragement that David gives toward the end of this psalm. This is in verse 24. He says, for he has not despised or abhorred the affliction of the afflicted, and he has not hidden his face from him, but has heard when he cried to him. Now, in our suffering, we just, we can always cry out to the Lord. If our kid is in a season where they're they're making bad choices and, and they're, they're lashing out. Um, that, that certainly causes suffering. I mean, in those moments, parents kind of have this, this feeling, I, I, I failed. This is, this is my fault. And, and they have all a flood of other, uh, other emotions, but they're, they're suffering will cry out to the Lord. Like if our kid is wrestling through a, a medical situation, that, that causes pain and, and suffering. Reach out to the Lord. He's not despised or abhorred. He has not hidden his face. God, God is right there and he's present and, um, and we should be sure to reach out to him when there is a need. We're going to take a short break today and actually share a resource with you this week. After that, we're going to be joined by Christopher and Bethany Mitchell, so stay with us. Well, this week, we're going to share an Easter-related resource as we approach Resurrection Sunday. Attached to the show notes is a devotional guide that will start on Palm Sunday and end on Easter Sunday. And so what you'll do is each day you'll walk through a section of scripture You'll do a little activity. You'll pray together as a family. Um, we're hoping that it'll be a really sweet time for you together uh, as a family, uh, focusing on the Lord, uh, remembering what Easter, what the resurrection is, is all about. And uh, there's also a recipe in there. You can make kind of a little sweet treat to, to teach your kids about the empty tomb. And so you can view the, the show notes for the link if you're interested in that resource. Uh, we'll also have copies of 
this available at our church, either in the main lobby or in the children's lobby. So you are welcome to pick up a copy there as well. So for now, let's get back to the show. Well, hey, welcome back to the, the podcast. We're joined by Christopher and Bethany Mitchell. They are joining us through uh, through phone, so we won't get to, to see them, but hopefully we'll be able to um, pick their brain a little bit about their, their family and their marriage and uh, kind of get some insight from them. And so um, really, as we get started, we would love to um, for you guys to just introduce yourself and tell us about your uh, family, tell us about the stage of life that, that you're in, kind of really anything that would help us get to know, get to you know you a little bit better. We are, we've got little kids and one in the oven, and we're just very busy people, I guess you could say, <laughs> but we uh, we live out in Canada, Virginia, and we're trying to start a little family farm here and trying to juggle a bunch of other things at the same time. So life's good. Yeah, that's great. So just uh, you were cutting out a little little bit there. So we have you have um, five kids, right? Five kids and one in the oven. One on the way. Okay. And so all your what? How old's your oldest? Our oldest is nine. He'll be ten in July. And uh, goes kind of stair steps. So it's nine, seven, five, three, and one. Okay, so you'll have you'll have the same amount of of children that that Brett has in a ten year time period. What's your what's your time period, Brett? Twenty, almost twenty. No, more like yeah, more like eighteen. Wow. Uh, and and Bethany, how how many years have you guys been married? Uh, we've been married for ten years in september well uh september we celebrated 10 years okay so you're you're rolling into your 11th okay cool so you've had you've had a lot of um pregnancies and children in your your short marriage then huh yeah we have (laughs) that's good that's a blessing four boys and one girl and when this one's born we'll have five boys and one girl oh goodness oh wow well, you know, uh, along these lines of this many children in the span of 10 years to 11, uh, Christopher, I'm sure you've had to uh, layer in some uh, priorities as you lead your, your, your family and, and, and lead, lead your bride in marriage. Could you share with us any kind of priorities that you guys have laid down for yourselves to keep you all afloat? Yeah, well, we uh, were kind of brainstorming about that question. And I think one of the big things that kind of stuck out to us that is that we uh, we guard our schedule kind of justly. Um, we have just a few activities that we do a week where we leave and, and go elsewhere, but for the most part, we're we're together here at our home as a family, uh, whether we're working in the yard or um, in the winter time, you know, trying to keep the house clean or, or playing board games together, stuff like that. We just try to make it um, difficult, I guess, for us to be separated for a while. Have you noticed that there's been um, difficulty in that as the kids have gotten older? Definitely. Um, so, you know, when, as they're getting older, they, they start to get into sports and, um, you know, wanting to, wanting to go places and stuff. Um, there's, there's been a little more of a pool, I guess, but it, it hasn't been too difficult at least yet. Um, we do, uh, you know, we, we do soccer when it's in season um, with the homeschool group and we do a, uh, it's kind of like a Christian Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts program. Okay. And that's something that, you know, they're able to, meet other kids and have have kind of a social life um and stuff like that but we try to make it where it's not you know stuff like that isn't pulling us away every night um yeah and and kind of breaking us apart every night so do your do your kids generally all participate in in those activities or are they more selective to to certain um kids of your uh, it's um it's geared toward more of the older kids obviously but um, in those activities, when we go, usually we go together. Um, 
last night we had a, uh, a one of those meetings for the the Boy Scout Girl Scout thing, and I took all the kids except the youngest, and Bethany stayed home with uh, Gavin, who's our one year old, and uh, kind of was able to have some one on one time with him while I was doing a you know daddy's night out with the kids thing with the others. <laughs> Yeah, that's great. I mean, I think that um, one of the things that I've, I've even noticed just kind of being part of the the podcast that we're doing here is that we're always like trying to reach out and schedule families. And I was just telling, I was telling Brett a little bit earlier how um, I was just reminded of just how families are just so busy. They just have no time to even jump on for, for a few minutes to do, to do something like this because of how, how crazy their schedules can, can get. And so I can imagine that that can be something that um, you both need to really work on and prioritize to make sure that there's no, not extra added chaos because that can, can certain, certainly weigh on like you both as a couple in your marriage and, um, so, so Bethany, maybe, maybe kind of leaning into this next one, uh, next question, um, that, that really also is centered on, on your marriage. Um, because, you know, I know both of you and I know you're both, uh, believers. And so if you're, if you're th- looking about, uh, your, your faith, um, h- how has, uh, or what, what role has faith played in your marriage of you know the last 11 years well I just feel like I'm really really blessed with an awesome husband (laughs) and he's really really easy to live with and I'm just thinking about the verse in the bible that says that husbands are supposed to love their their wives well and he's just really really kind to me and he loves me really well and um I'm not so, paying her to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Very thankful for that. Um, I also feel like we we feel the the freedom to speak to each other honestly, to to speak, I guess, the truth and love to one another, um, mm-hmm. based on what is found in God's word, and we do pray for each other and with each other. Um, not as often as we would like. I feel like at the end of the day, sometimes we're just, we're just so exhausted. I know that's not an excuse, but we just kind of lay there with our mouths half open and (laughs) staring into space. I understand that, that, that feeling exactly. And you have two more children (laughs) than I do. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, we, but particularly for issues that are really difficult like when we come to the end of our own strength when we come to the end of ourselves or we can't see clearly about something we know that you know our our hearts and our minds are not um able to 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 think or see something in a godly way then we will pray for one another and so i feel like that's um that's been really important and Christopher's pointing to something on our notes. Yeah, yeah, you, that, any, uh, yeah. you can go ahead and ship in, Christopher. With that, um, so part of part of our whole marriage and even our relationship before our marriage, um, we we've, we've kind of recognized that we're both recipients of God's grace, and it's kind of been, I guess, our our role towards each other to uh, pour that grace out on each other you know, when, when there's been times where either we've sinned or we're struggling with uh, something emotional or, or anything like that. um, Really our one of our priorities has been to, I guess, support each other in that with the grace that God gives us. Um, And it, that's just been really fundamental to how we relate to one another when it comes to difficulties and things. Wow. That's, that's a really good point. I, 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 I feel like I see that. Um, I feel like I see that maybe experience that more with, with my kids than, than in, in our marriage, but you're, you're absolutely right that that is, is crucial and essential. You know, it's so easy uh, when you have uh, the number of children that you have and, 
and now they're they're pushing into that age where there's some extracurricular sports and and uh, you know there you know there might be some times where they're a little bit cantankerous or whatever. But you know, and again, we, we could focus on all those things. But I think I'd, I'd really just uh, like to ask you guys um, to really just focus on and, and, and Christopher, I'll start with you is to, you know, you know, can you share with us some of the, you know, maybe one or, or, or two of the biggest blessings that you uh, have been able to experience, um, you know, as a married couple and, and maybe even expanding to as your family has grown, care to share with us anything there? Yeah, I think the the first thing I thought of when I was reviewing that question was um, just confirmation from the Lord that that he's uh, that that the kids are are a blessing from him. Um, we be, between uh, Fairlight, our our seven year old, and Gabriel, our five year old, we uh, we had a miscarriage. And that, um, that time was really difficult. You know, we were, um, you know, we were struggling with, with why, I mean, we, we both trusted God and knew that he's, uh, he's provident in, in our lives and, um, and sovereign. And, and we're just thinking, you know, why, why did this have to happen? And then a few months later, we find out we're pregnant with Gabriel. And to me, I'm, I'm just thinking, you know, God, from my perspective, I'm looking at that loss and I'm thinking why, but without that loss, we would not be able to experience living with Gabriel and, and the blessing that he is in our lives. Um, I think, you know, not, not only him, obviously, but uh, just confirming that all of the kids um, are each each one of them a blessing straight from the Lord, and um, and that you know He's that, that God is trusting us with with raising them um, in the way that they should go. Yeah, Bethany, what was some of the maybe the thing that jumped out into your your mind when you when you thought about the blessing of of all of your kids and just some maybe even like a a memory like like Christopher for shared. Um, we have a sign above our kitchen sink that says, if you think our hands are full, you should see our heart. <laughs> and I think that describes pretty well how we, <laughs> how we feel. Um, you know, it can be really uh, hectic and even overwhelming to have so many children and to be a, like a homeschool mom who stays at home um, most of the time with the kids but man the the joy and the laughter and just the way we get to spend our lives together is really it's, it's hard even to describe and um I think that before kids or even if, if I didn't have kids I think I would be a much more selfish person just just naturally just mm-hmm. thinking about number one you know yeah and wow. yeah, you but, don't really have a chance to be you don't really have a chance to be selfish too much when you have that many children yeah right. yeah what, and um, also there's, great answers there's a song by cademan's call if you guys have heard of them they're who were they in the 90s or yeah uh, 90s I, can, I can remember hearing them when i was in when i was in high school okay it's called love keeps growing more love Hmm. and yeah I just I I didn't grow up in a large family Christopher did he's one of 12 um and I have one sister and I always I always thought that I would have five kids huh. and so I always wanted a large family but wasn't um accustomed to the actual daily in and out what it would actually be like and it's been harder than I thought it would be but it's also <laughs> been yeah, I bet that's a big difference. Um, you know, family of of four to uh, yeah. you know family of soon to soon to be eight. I think that um, one of the things that that um, that we that we can even wrestle with, even just having having three children, and so I I imagine it it um, 
just it expounds more and more as you as you add um, just the the necessity and the need that that you guys um, that we all feel really as as parents to invest intentionally in each one of our kids individually. Um, you know, we're only we only have have so much time, and so you really I feel like need to be be intentional. I'm curious if there's um, anything that you guys try and do to, to make sure that you're pouring into to each one of your, your kids in as equal a measure as you, as you possibly can. Yeah. Um, well on the weekends when I'm, when I'm able to be here and, and watch the other kids, we try to, um, I guess our, our main thing is to, to basically get to know them, you know, um, trying to get down, at their level and ask them questions and, and really get to know who they are, their personality and what, you know, their likes and dislikes um, and things like that. I think it's, it's difficult to, uh, to invest in, in anybody if you, if you're not taking the time to get to know them. Hmm. Um, but one, one way we do that is on the weekends when I'm able to stay home um, with the kids, you know, Bethany might have something to do where she's got to run out to the store or something like that. And we're, we're intentional about her taking just one kid with her. Mm. Um, and that way she's able to, you know, they, they always have her here all day long and it's all of them and her. Yeah. Um, so that this way they're able to split that up um, and, you know, have some memories of that time I went to the store with mommy and we talked about, about stuff. And um, with me, I, I, I guess the biggest way that I try to invest in them is, to, to play with them because when when you're playing with them you you can learn all kinds of stuff about your own kids just in playing and um you know sometimes there will be a, a breakthrough where they ask a question or, or uh you know you get to, to review something that we talked about at the table um during our our bible time and i don't know i think it's to me that, yeah. that's the easiest I, I'm glad that I'm glad that you mentioned it like that because I think that people I think that people without children or maybe who, who are still kind of in in the the early stages of of parenting they I feel like there may be an opportunity for you to like kind of question um, question that and be like well yeah of course I of course I know my kid like of course I know things things about them but but unless you are really asking and and intentionally you know seeking uh, seeking to know who they are that they're they really could surprise you and, and so I'm, I'm glad you kind of mentioned that because it's probably an aspect of parenting that that maybe some people don't don't quite think about totally is the fact that you do need to ask questions and get to know them and talk to them intentionally and so and Jeff there, I thought of, um, one of the things that I've done throughout the years, just realizing that it is sometimes difficult to have these one-on-one dates or times with our kids is that I've really just prayed for that opportunity to arise. And it's been really cool to see how God has answered that prayer in a very natural way. Like, for example, sometimes one of our kids will just randomly get up earlier than the rest. And so we have some special one-on-one time in the morning to sit together and talk or read a book, eat breakfast together, um, or just, just throughout the day or before bed or after bed. Um, that's been really, yeah, that's really cool special. That is, that's cool. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. I, I think back on uh, when, when, when my kids were a lot younger um, you know, and, and I would hear people say, well, you got to make sure you spend quality time with them. And, and it began, I began to really see that uh, quality can be really hard when they're younger. Uh, if they have a poopy diaper, that, remo- that removes a lot of quality, <laughs> um, you, know, uh, you, know, you know, runny noses and crying, you know, you could pretty much just throw quality out the door, right? But, but I began to realize that that quantity, quantity time especially when they're little, it, you know, I, I can't tell you how many times I'd be like maybe in the other room and, and, uh, and maybe I, I would hear one of my children say, dad. Yeah. Um, oh, just wanted to make sure you were there. It was just sort of like a, a presence thing. You know, we think about 
our relationship with mm -hmm. the Lord and we want to be in his presence and, and, you know, you know, better is, you know, one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. There was always something that David was always chiming in. I just want to be, I want to be, I want to be where he's at, you know, and, but um, just really, really great answers. You too. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm really impressed. It's just such a blessing, you know, as we kind of bring, bring this little interview home, uh, would there be any, you know, any parting uh, words of wisdom or advice that, that you would uh, care to share? Uh, Christopher, we'll start with you. Bethany, I'll let you close it off. Any just final parting words of wisdom or encouragement uh, that you would like to share? Oh, um, well, before we do that, and you may decide to edit this out later, but <laughs> I was kind of nervous coming on here with y'all because a couple of weeks ago, I had a dream that everybody at church kind of let us know at the same time that our kids were terrible. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, we don't even want them in our classes anymore. And this we was a dream. The, uh, yeah. We were standing in the children's lobby downstairs and you, Brett, excoriated me. You lit <laughs> into me about how I'm failing as a parent. And uh, I was like, where I woke up and I was thinking, where in the world did that dream come from? Uh, <laughs> Anyway, I wanted oh. to share that. Because Where, edit that out. <laughs> where's Where's Joseph and Daniel when we need, when I need him to interpret a dream? <laughs> I, yeah. Um, oh. Anyway, but you know, oh, so <laughs> so thinking about advice, and you know, both of us are thinking we're in, we're in no position to give advice to other people. <laughs> oh yes, you are. <laughs> Spill it out. We man. just feel like we're all the time, but. I was thinking about it and just, you know, something that, that I guess I, I could preach to myself is to remember that when we're raising children um, in the way that they should go, that, that we, when we take that step and, and decide to dedicate, um, dedicate our time and energy to, to growing them in the faith um, to the best of our ability, we're not doing that alone that we're actually joining God in that mission. And it's, it's, you know, it's not a baby dedication. It's a parent dedication. We're dedicating mm -hmm. uh, ourselves and efforts to um, assisting God in raising our children. And, uh, you know, just think, thinking of it like that. And when we fail, we repent. Um, get back on our feet and and pray pray to god to help us continue you know i think it's helpful to to not take life too seriously i think that i specifically can get very uh very overwhelmed and um i don't know what the word is but just just get into the zone too much like gotta get this done gotta get this done and um it's been really helpful that christopher makes me laugh all the time and so if, if there's if, if we're able to laugh together as a couple and as a family that's a really awesome blessing and i wrote that christopher is not easily offended so I don't know if that's a piece of advice, but I guess just to be comfortable with one another. To <laughs> well, yeah, it's a piece of advice that you could, you could, yeah, anyone could take hold of that. Absolutely. My yeah. wife laughs at me still. She laughs at me. <laughs> so. Good stuff. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, well, Be Bethany and Christopher, we really uh, appreciate your, your time and, and coming on and, um, you know, to all the to all the parents out there, um, you know, this is, uh, they have one on the way here and they have five kids kind of running around. They were able to um, take a few minutes out of their, their day to, to talk with us. And so we really, we really appreciate that. We know that that time is, is valuable and, um, and uh, we're uh, encouraged by how uh, you all are um, just handling and, and, and having a priority of keeping God central in your marriage and, and your parenting and, um, we believe that that that's going to do nothing but but provide blessings and encouragement and, and oh, hope Jeff, for you. Jeff, maybe the uh, uh, you know if uh, maybe we can get that 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 Christian 
Boy Scout and Girl Scout uh, organization. That might be something good to share. Yeah, what was the name of that, Christopher? Uh, the, the Boy Scouts one is called Trail Life, and the girls is called American Heritage Girls. Okay, and yeah. They, the, one, the, the chapter that we go to meets at, um, oh, what's it called? Or Orch Orchard Hills. Mm -hmm. Okay. Church, and it, it's teaching... It, it kind of reminds me of Awana in the way that they're they're structured, but it's um, less mem memorization, although they're incorporating that into it, uh, less scripture memorization and more um, practical trail skills and, and uh, organization skills and things like that. Um, yeah, it's, it's every other Monday from 630 to 8, and our kids love it. It's hmm. so much fun. They have events. Um, they have hikes that they organize and Fairlight and I will be going to a horseback riding adventure, I think next Saturday. Oh, fun. They have a camp out. Yeah. Just really, really enjoyed that so far. Yeah. That's really cool. And so if you're interested in getting that, yeah, thanks for bringing that up and, and letting us, um, you know, hear more, more about that. And um, well, like I said, we really appreciate you, you guys jumping on and uh, thank you for your, your, your wisdom and um, just, just giving us a little glimpse into to your life. And um, we appreciate all of you listening to the very end. And we hope that you join us again next week. Have a good one. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Through the Forest. We hope it was a blessing to you. We'd be really grateful if you liked and subscribed to our channel. And if you know someone who would be encouraged by this episode, please pass it along. Have a great week and we'll see you next time.